Hi, I'm Jenny Fish from One Big Happy Yarn Company. We want to be your local yarn shop no matter where you are. Welcome to our Cable Cow and Fingerless Mitts Knit Along. I know cables can be intimidating, but I designed these projects for the first time cable knitter. So whether you're new to cables or want a project that wows but is actually quite simple, this fits the bill. We have a kit that includes the printed pattern plus the yarn I'm using at OneBigHappy.com. Let's get started. So for the project today that we're knitting is the cable cowl. And we will be using Madeline Tosh Tosh Vintage. It's 100% super wash, merino wool. Um, it is also, the color that I'm using is called Well Water. This is a super soft and kind of a slick yarn. So it's super easy to knit with, which makes it helpful when you're doing cables. And it has amazing drape when you're done because it kind of holds its stitches so that your cables stay in place. And it looks beautiful. It has a little sheen to it. So this is the yarn that we'll be using today. Um, we'll be using a US size seven knitting needle. On our cowl here, you can see that we are gonna be knitting across here. And it's about seven inches. So if you like to use straight needles, this is a project that would be perfectly fine on straight needles. I always prefer circulars, it's just a personal preference. So I will be using the Chow Gu um, US7, which is a 4.5 millimeter. I'm using their circular needles. And also for this project today, we will be using cable needles. And there's two different styles. We have a hook style and then we have like the straight style and I'll show you how to use. It's personal preference so you can watch how I use them and decide which one you want to try. I also am going to be showing you how to work cables using a double pointed needle. Sometimes that's all you have, you can make it work and I'll show you how. Okay, so these are the supplies that we'll be using today. I also want to go over the pattern with you. In the pattern we have gauge, first off, 18 stitches per four inches and 26 rows. So check this out, this is my cute little tape measure. It's a little sheep, isn't he cute? Okay, so I'm gonna be using my tape measure today to kind of just go over how I check gauge. Um, first, I knit up my swatch. Now this gauge was taken before we blocked the swatch. And you'll see my little red line here, that's where I was marking my stitches so I could keep track. After I blocked it, it kind of came out. So you want to measure yours before you block it and you take your measuring tape, find your four inches and then you just simply count each stitch in that four inch section and you should come up with 18 stitches or something relatively close. If you have more than 18 stitches then you want to try going up a needle size. If you have less than 18 stitches then try going down a needle size. Then you count your row gauge which is how many rows that you get in a four inch section. And so you turn your measuring tape and you're gonna be counting from top to bottom or bottom to top, but the long way. Then we want to get 26 <laughs> rows per four inches. So that is our gauge. On this project, the row gauge is, is more important to get as close as possible. And the reason for that is because that's gonna be determine your final length of the project. So we'll go over that as well. But I just wanna let you know that that was my gauge when I wrote this pattern. So you wanna get as close to that as possible. So after we have gauge in the pattern, we have two different sets of instructions. One is a long version and in that it's row directions. It tells you row by row what you're doing on each row. And then we also have chart directions. Now for me personally, on new patterns I'm not familiar with, I start out reading the row by row instructions until I get it, get it like a good feel for the pattern. Then I'll move over to the chart and the chart is more convenient. It takes all of that information that's in the row by row instructions and it uses symbols and squares to tell you what to do next. And it's a more condensed version. So I like to keep that in my bag with me when I'm knitting on the go. It's less um, 
bulky and it's just right there. I can use my pattern keeper to move my magnets and keep, um, you know, just to keep track of where I'm at in the pattern. So that's my personal preference. Both of these are in the pattern for you, so you can use whatever you're more familiar with. So that's information on the pattern. Are you ready to get started? For this pattern, we'll be casting on 42 stitches. I'm preferring to use the long tail cast on, and I'm also gonna be using the two needle method. And I want to have a little bit longer tail than normal, um, just for seaming purposes. That is a personal preference, but I'll show you where that comes into play as well. To do the long tail cast on using two needles, I'm gonna take both of my needles and hold them together. I've made my slip knot. I have my working yarn out and my tail towards me. I'm going to slide both of these needles into that slip knot and cinch it. Now the reason why I use two needles when I cast on is because it keeps the consistency of every cast on stitch um, consistent. It, it, it holds your stitches and makes them consistent. So by doing this, it's also a great tip for new knitters and I really like this trick. Um, you don't want to make your stitches too tight. So by using the two needles, it sets that size for you. So I'm gonna go ahead and cast on 42 stitches. And one of the things I also wanna show you that when you are doing this cast on with two needles, sometimes your yarn will slip between the two needles. If that happens, just pull that stitch off and cast on again. Okay, so let's get 42 on here and then we will move on to the next step in this pattern, which is starting on row one and two. Okay, just to recap how to make the long tail cast on, it's a slingshot method. You put your thumb and your index finger in, grab the yarn with your pinky and your ring finger, pull back like a slingshot, and you go under the one by your thumb, under the one from your index finger and slide through. I'll show that a couple more times here. There we go. Okay, so I lost count. I need to go back and count and see where I am. A little trick to counting um, for me, I like to count by fives, and to do that, I'll do, I'll pull three apart and then two apart. So I'm like five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39. Okay, so we're at 39, 40, 41 and 42. So now I have cast on 42 stitches using two needle and a long tail cast on. The next step is we need to go back down to one needle. So I hold the tip of one needle and I pull the cable for the other one. One slides out. Here we go. I've got 42 stitches on my cord ready to start. So rows one and two of this pattern is simply knit. So we're gonna knit two rows that forms a garter ridge. And I'll show you on this finished cowl right here. That's this ridge right here. Before we start getting into our cables, we just simply knit two rows. So I'll go ahead and do that. And to knit, you stick your needle in like this. You're going from left to right through the front loop wrapping your yarn around the back and pulling it through. And that is a knit stitch. We're gonna do that again. I'll show you that again. You do this all the way across this row, flip it over, knit all the way across the next row, and then once you finish those two rows, meet me back here and we'll start on row one of the cable pattern. Okay, so once you have completed rows one and two of straight garter stitch, which is knit every stitch. Now we're ready to start the cable pattern. So row one of cable pattern, we're going to be placing our stitch markers as we go along. PM, you'll see that in the pattern, and PM means place 
marker. So the first step is knit three, and that's a K3, it means knit three. So we're simply going to knit three stitches. One, two, and three. And then we're gonna place marker, PM. Now I'm on the right side of my work. One of the little indicators that I like to use is a different color stitch marker for this first stitch marker on this row. So I'll always know that the odd color stitch marker on the right side is the right side of my work. I'm using these really soft, round, they're from Clover and they're called um, the round ring markers. So I've got that on there. Then the next step is to purl three. So the first three stitches that I just knit, this is going to be the garter edge of our cowl. And I'll show you that on the finished cowl. It's this section right here. These are the first three stitches that we're knitting. And we'll be knitting this way, but this is the edge that it makes as we go along our pattern. I've knit three, placed my marker, and now I'm going to purl three. This is gonna create the reverse stockinette. And basically what that means is that our purls will be on the right side of the work and our knits will be on the wrong side of the work. By adding this reverse stockinette, it helps define and make the cable pop when you're looking at the pattern on the fabric. Okay, so I purled three. Now I'm going to place a marker. Now I'm switching over to the green color stitch marker and I'll be using that for the rest to mark my spots. Okay, so we knit three, purl three. Now we knit eight. These eight stitches that I'm knitting here are going to be the section where my cable is. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And let me show you on the finished cable what that area looks like. So on here, there's the three for the garter edge, there's the three that's the reverse stockinette, and these are the eight that I just knit. Grabbing my next stitch marker, slide that on. That would have been funny, it would have been like ring toss if I would have made it. Okay, so we knit those eight stitches and we placed our, our stitch marker. Now I'm doing three stitches of purl, so I'm purling three. Then placing stitch marker, and then knitting eight. This is gonna be for the second cable. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Placing another, I know it seems like there is a lot of stitch markers that we're placing in here but there's a reason for every one of them. Each stitch marker separates the stitch pattern. And as you work along your chart, you'll know, okay, every time I hit the stitch marker, I'm gonna be doing something else. So it helps for me when I have this many stitch markers to tell me, okay, I've hit three stitches in the stitch marker. Now I can look at my chart or look at my pattern and it'll tell me what I do next. And so now that I have placed that stitch marker after eight, I'm going to be purling three. One, two, and three. Placing another stitch marker, and I'm knitting eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Placing a stitch marker. Now I'm gonna be purling three. One, two, and three. Placing a stitch marker. Last one, I promise. <laughs> we're placing this stitch marker and we're going to net the final three. And this is the other side of our cowl with the garter edge row. And I'll show you, as soon as I'm finished with this, I'll show you where that's at on the finished cowl. Okay, there is 
row one of the cable pattern and you can see where all of our stitch markers are. And then I'll show you next to the cowl and I'll show you how to where everything lines up. Now this will be a little more stretched out. As we work along this pattern, it'll shrink back in because we're gonna be using up some space with our twisted stitches that cause the cable there. Okay, so these first three stitches are the edge. The next set is the reverse stockinette. The next set is the, ca uh, is the cable. And then we have reverse stockinette, the cable, reverse stockinette, the cable, reverse stockinette, and then the edge stitches. So I think what you visually see how this is going to turn out as we go along, it kind of helps your brain to understand, okay, this is what we're doing. At first it looks a little confusing, but if you follow along, it will, after you get some fabric on your needles, start to make a lot more sense. Okay, we're on to row two. This is the reverse side of our pattern. Now, because the edge stitches are in garter, that means you knit both sides of your work. So we're going to go ahead and knit the first three stitches. One, two, and three. Then you're gonna see something along the lines of SM, or you're going to see SM, which means slide marker. From here on out in the pattern, every time you come to one of the stitch markers, you don't have to do anything with it. You just simply slide it. It's just to mark that section. Okay, then We've knit three, slid our marker. Now we're gonna knit three more. One, two, and three. And then slide our marker. Now we're on the back side of where that cable is. We are going to purl these eight stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight. Slide our marker. Knit three. One, two, three. Slide our marker. And we're going to purl the next eight stitches. One, two, three four, five, six, seven, eight. Slide the marker and knit one, two, three. Slide and purl. See, by having these stitch markers here, it's so easy to know what comes next that you can memorize this pattern very fast. You just know when you hit that stitch marker, okay, I'm switching from a knit to a purl, except for the first three and the last three. Those are always knit. But in the middle, you pretty much just follow on these rows what was already there. Okay, so then we're going to knit three. And then the last three, we knit. One, two, and three. So now I've shown you how to complete rows one and two. Rows three and four are exactly the same as rows one and two. So go ahead and work those. And then join me next time as I show you how to work the cable pattern with a tip on how to track the rows. Then we will finish off with binding off, blocking, and seaming up the cable pattern. Be sure to hit the subscribe button below and click the bell to be notified every time we have a new video. Happy knitting!